Yeah, Lord, uh, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation. And we know that, man, um, you've done so much in both of our lives and we just celebrate your goodness. And we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We just believe that as we have a conversation about what you've done in Dave's life, that there are gonna be people on the other side that are gonna resonate and be impacted as a result. And so we just give you this time. We ask that you would move and be glorified in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome back to the Love Church Story podcast. And man, I'm just stoked to sit down with with Dave Breyer. And uh, it's been cool just getting to know you over the past few years, man. It's it's been a privilege and an honor. And uh, Dave's been a part of our small group in different seasons. And one thing that I really appreciate about you is you're just, you're a constant encourager. I've told you that before that i uh, just really grateful for your words, man. There's been, there's been pivotal moments over the last few years where your encouragement has really lifted me um, in big ways. And I know that that's who you are, but I, I'd love for you to just take us all the way back. Like, let's start, uh, you're a young guy and um, you know, you went through a lot as a, as a young person. So maybe tell us a little bit about where, where your life started. Yeah, I, uh, well, it, I, I'll take you back to third grade when life kind of changed a little bit. Um, my, uh, mom got a divorce and, uh, we kind of uprooted everything. Uh, I was going to Sandoz elementary here, uh, over in that Miller South area. And, uh, she immediately got remarried as soon as she could. Uh, so we transferred to Carlsbad, California. Um, and then from there, it was multiple schools, uh, all the way over towards Washington, DC, Stafford, Virginia. Um, and that was a short marriage. Um, and all the transferring and whatnot through all the way to high school, I was 10 different schools. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, living in Stafford, Virginia, right outside of Washington, DC, she said, hey, this isn't going to work out. I'm going to send you back to your grandparents. You're going to live with them for a little while. And that's when, you know, life for me, I think at that point, right before then, uh, really started to change, you know, from just a really innocent little blonde haired kid to, you know, having to mature probably a little quicker than I wanted to. For sure. Yeah. I was going to ask like just the, the dynamic and the impact of all that moving and um, you know, just some of the uncertainty that comes, you know, I think yeah. we share that in common. My, my parents divorced when I was two and um, there are just certain dynamics that you yeah. experience, you know, when that's, when that's your upbringing and certainly you went yeah. through, through some of those. Well, and, and you know, when I was still in Stafford, Virginia, I did, I do remember specifically going to a little Baptist church there and, you know, God showed up. Um, I didn't understand it then. I understand it now. Um, he was letting me know he was there, kind of interjected that seed just to say, you know, I'm always here for you. I think it's interesting in our life and in our story. Yeah. It's always, we, we just get like more clear insight as we look back. Yeah. Right. You know, like you don't really recognize it in the moment, but if, if you're really honest and you reflect about your story and the mm-hmm. path that God has taken you down, yeah. there's probably moments you can look back on and be like, man, God was planting a seed there or his hand was there or his provision was there or his protection yeah. was there. So, okay. So this is how life starts. Well, how did you end up back in Omaha? Maybe talk us through that. And I know that there, there's another story that I really want you to touch on, on this backpack. You'll have to remind me of that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The backpack story. Um, but coming back to Omaha was mom's decision. Um, I think marriage was, you know, from the one she left to the, the next one got, was even worse. Wow. You know, uh, sometimes I think we find ourselves, you know, in divorces right in that same uh, situation, you know, and that's what she found. Uh, so sent me back to my grandparents. Uh, I'm now uh, in the seventh grade. I'm at a school called Norris Junior High, and Norris Junior High is kind of famous for their football field is, um, uh, it is, uh, oh, what is it, the Eagles? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the high school? Um, oh, man, I did just slipped my mind. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, they're called, I, I can't think. About. Somebody will tell us in the comments yes. what the math yes. is. There you and go. I'll think of it later on. Yeah, you will. But, uh, so I'm in the seventh grade, and living with my grandparents is honestly probably the best thing that happened to me because it was a time of settlement. I felt comfortable. I uh, got the best grades I probably ever had. Wow. Um, 
but it was also a time of figuring out what I'm going to do. I mean, I know that sounds crazy at seventh grade, but um, life, you had to grow up real quick. For sure. Um, and the, the thing was is that I decided at that point, like, you know, I'm going to have to make some decisions at a young, young age. So I can remember very specifically, uh, I was reading muscle magazines and, and trying to figure out, you know, how I was going to make money and be on my own, as crazy as that sounds. And I can remember being at school. It was right after Christmas. And the Christmas story about the backpack was, is that my mom got it wrong. I wanted a backpack for uh, school. And I love the Raiders. I was a Raiders fan. They were a tough team. And she buys me the Cowboys. And I'm like, Mom, this, what, does anyone like the Cowboys, you know? <laughs> Sorry, guys. But... Uh, so she gets me the Cowboys duffel bag and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? So I put that duffel bag in my closet and say, okay, thanks mom. I was polite. You know, I appreciate the gesture, but I'm not wearing this backpack. Yeah. You're like, come on, man. It's not the Raiders. No, it's not the Raiders. Um, and back then they were a pretty decent team for sure. And, uh, so fast forward a couple weeks. I remember also during that time I'd got a present that was candy. I love this now and later candy. Well, I would bring them to school every day. And kids started asking me about them. Hey, can I have one? Can I buy a pack from you? And I remember this one kid said, I'll buy a pack from you. And I, and I said, okay, great. They're 10 cents a pack at that time. I said, it's a quarter. He gave me his milk money. So I was like, hey, this is a great idea. Maybe I'll bring a couple more packs. Because I can go and buy two more, you know, and then three. And so, long story short, I started a little business. <laughs> First time you became an entrepreneur, seventh yeah. grade in the middle school. Seventh grade. <laughs> I had Kubots, uh, the pharmaceutical place off of 56 and Center, right uh, across the street from Grodd's. Um, they were ordering in cases of it for me in special flavors, pina colada, you Come name on, it. Come on, let's go. But I was not aware, I don't think I was aware that it was not a, it was against school policy to sell <laughs> candy on on the premises unless it was a sponsored program well by this time i had that duffel bag full of about three or four hundred dollars worth of candy and about three hundred dollars of cash on me i had a big you know fat stack of ones in my pocket <laughs> oh this and is um i remember a teacher oh I, I she was tough i should probably my best teacher i ever had but she was tough she Taps me on the shoulder as I'm doing my little deal for now and later. <laughs> you need to go to the principal's office with me. Oh. So I go down to the principal's office. Uh, they call my mom. My mom says, well, let him keep his money as a now and later. He won't sell on premises anymore. So that was the end of that first business. I think it's so funny because, and you know, you know, our listeners might be like, oh, that, that maybe that's a little bit of a random story, but it's not yeah. because it's connected to this season of life and we'll get there. Yeah. But I think it's so interesting that as you and I were having dialogue just about mm -hmm. the journey that God has taken you down, yeah. it's, so, it's so interesting that in seventh grade, mm -hmm. there were some, some foundational things being laid yeah. that would eventually, you know, that you would carry with you even yeah. in your current season of life. So here you are, seventh grade. Maybe let's fast forward into like, high school, early young adult years, because okay. I think for you, like training and fitness mm -hmm. and yeah. bodybuilding, like when did your passion, so like when were you intrigued with, with that sort of thing? Tell well, me. I was intrigued, you know, early on, uh, it, even into the seventh grade with, with lifting and whatnot, but did not get into it. I just felt like my, my, my transition into high school, my, I felt like my three goals were, and, and uh, forgive me, but were to be the strongest, toughest guy, uh, to make as much money as I possibly could, mm. and just, just manhandle life, because what I'd been dealt was, was not where I wanted to be. Wow. You know, so going into high school, I can remember freshman year, uh, there was a club, and it's not there any longer, I think it's where Metro College is now, it's called Elkhorn Racquetball Club. And uh, I went in there and started my lifting. It was the ninth grade, and I don't know, if I would have ever been good at football or anything else, like there's just, it wasn't my passion, you know, and, and I didn't have the talent that I, you could just watch guys with massive talent. So I didn't really know where I fit in in that. I knew I wanted to lift weights and, and, and do some, some strength training and whatnot. So at this club, I, uh, just started with bench press. Cause that, if, if you don't have a bench press, you're no one, mm. you know what I mean? 
So I'm like, okay, I'll start with a bench press. I put quarters on, repped it out, put plates on, repped it out. And then I put uh, 225 on it as a freshman and was doing like 10 reps. A couple old guys came over and I say old, they're in their 20s. For sure. And they said, kid, do you know how strong you are? And I was like, no, is this good? You know, so. You, had, you just had no clue. No, had no, no clue. Idea. Yeah. No clue. Then I was a, just a spark to say, hey, Ignite. This is this is the direction I want to go. This is this is me. I'm good at something for sure. And so like you're like, it's so interesting how I tell people for me, mm -hmm. you know, there's there was a you know there were some struggles and some gap in like yeah. love and affirmation as a young person. Yeah, exactly. And so I would run to athletics. Yeah. For the love and affirmation. Yeah. Because it would fill me up on the inside. Oh, for sure. And so it's interesting how a good thing can actually fuel a toxic mm. thing. Mm. So maybe maybe just even share with our listeners because right now we're talking about your life before you you know surrender to Christ. Yeah. What you know and we. We've had co many conversations mm -hmm. just about ego and yeah. um, and wrong motivation. So, like in this season of life, what was driving you, and what was just some of the fruit of what of why you wanted to be this strong, big, successful guy? Honestly, felt alone. If I could just put it in one word, felt alone. And I really ha never had anyone just grab me and just say, "Hey, this is the direction you need to go." So I was going to stronghold life. Wow, you, you know, really uh, physically just take it over. Um, and, and I love what you were saying earlier. Yeah, you, you, you become this strong person and, and whatnot, but by the time, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior year, I'm literally by senior year, I'm pressing weights that, you know, I don't even know if they're world records or what, but I was doing as big as possibly can be. You know, I'm getting up to 225, 240, uh, and then I'm pressing uh, military press behind my neck at 415, which is, you know, I would have people come from other gyms to come watch me at Omaha Athletic Club just to watch me do this lift. That's crazy, man. But I'm, I, you know, as it, and I can remember a gentleman called me one time. He said, he said, you can't do this without God. I said, I, I was doing it without God. Wow. Wow. But the implosion is coming. It's yeah, and it's so interesting because I just think about how most people would have probably looked at you on the outside, this mm -hmm. strong, good looking dude. Mm -hmm. That's it, you know, most people are probably like, This guy has life by the chops. Yeah. But on the inside, mm -hmm. on the inside, you're you're describing it as you felt alone. Yeah. You know, and it's like you're trying to overcome by projecting something externally to cover yeah. up what's going on on the inside. Yeah, because I love that attention. Wow. You know what I mean? I love people coming in and watching me. Um, and, and like I said, not only am I starting to implode internally, my body's starting to implode a little bit. Uh, I went to uh, Dr. Clark uh, and he examined my neck from doing all that. And he said, man, you've got some breakage on, on the tips of your, your, your spinal column. This could go and actually paralyze you. You know what I mean? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming this person, you know, of not only I could see physical things that, that are going to start to go wrong from, from pushing myself to an extreme amount to pushing myself here, you know? Absolutely. And so here you are, you're, you know, this physically strong person, mm -hmm. but if you, but if you're, if you were honest with yourself and I think looking back, yeah, you could recognize and maybe see that along the journey, yeah. God was there, but you were spiritually bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So now, now walk us through just the season of life where you really felt like you came to that place of surrender? Well, it, it became like my goals were to, to be this strong person, to be this financially, you know, and, and to find, you know, love and this beautiful life that, that the wife that I have now, you know. Um, but a, as I'm going into this and I, my career is starting to take place a little bit too, um, and I'm working for this marketing company uh, and basically wanting to change careers. Uh, going into a, a better job, making more money. Mm -hmm. um, and there's certain events that happened during that period. So I, I'm gaining, you know, but I can remember when everything exploded. Mm. Uh, uh, it, was, it was a tough day. It was the day where I took everything that I had and almost gave it away. Wow. And, and, and I talked about it uh, during my baptism here uh, and literally uh, almost took a man's life. Wow. And I can remember my exact words to the Lord at that point. 
Uh, I'm right around that 20 year old, 21 years old. And uh, I said, Lord, if you will let this man live, uh, I, I will never touch another man uh, f- and cause them physical harm. And that's when I, I was done. That's when I was broken. And I, I actually watched that man's breath come back into his lung. I'm not even sure he was alive. So all that strength and, and attitude and, and you, you had said, um, you, everyone maybe thinks I have this by the horns and, and here we are. It's exploding on me. Probably the first time in your life where you really experience the grace of God, mm. you know, because the grace of God is getting what we don't deserve. Absolutely. And in that moment, he answered a prayer. Yeah. And you come to this moment, you know, of surrender, recognizing that there's there's just the path you're on is not mm. the path that's le- leading to life. Mm-mm. And even though you're Death. this big, strong guy on the outside, on the inside, you you needed something different. Yeah. And so you come to this moment. And, um, and so maybe talk to us a little bit about life on the other side of that decision specific because here you are you're still in your 20s yeah right you're young and i don't know if you're married at this point but you're you know married in your 20s so maybe talk just about life on the other side of that of that decision because i know we've had conversations and i think this could be really healthy for some of our listeners yeah. that life doesn't is not just peaches and cream following mm-hmm. christ as a matter of fact he he said that we would face trials and tribulations yeah. and this walk isn't easy and i know that you experienced some of that I, you know, it, and that's exactly right. I, I almost felt like it got a little harder at first. I felt like I was in a little bit of a valley because I did uh, already love my wife at the time. I was not married to her at the time. Um, we were living together um, and it it was was a difficult time because now uh, I'm, I'm leaning in towards what God wants me to do. And it's a complete 180. Mm. You know, it's everything from the, the way I think about my physicality and how ego driven I'm, I am to my uh, financial situation to how I treat my wife, you know, soon to be wife. And it, it, uh, it, it was difficult. And so like, yeah, so like in a season where all of a sudden you're recognizing that it, we call it the process of sanctification. Yeah. You know, you're coming to the realization that maybe there are some areas in my life that don't align with God's word. Yeah. And that's, was that what was creating a little bit of the tension and the, the toughness of that particular season? Absolutely, because yeah. I am a slow walker. Wow. <laughs> you know, I mean, wow. I, I just got baptized at 50 here, mm. you know, and, and uh, just being obedient, finally saying, okay, I, I surrender this part of my life, you know what I mean? So that's how slow of a walker, you know, I really was because I had so much to unlearn. I was never taught. You know, obviously the Holy Spirit living in me now is, is teaching me, but again, I'm hard of hearing. For sure. Yeah. And I think, I mean, it's just such a beautiful piece of your story, just like, and we'll touch on the baptism, but yeah. I think that's such a, a great picture too, of just what it looks like. Cause you, you know, you had been walking with Christ at this point, Yeah. but you know, we hear the scripture, obedience is greater than mm. sacrifice. Yeah. And when God speaks, the question is, will we obey? And we'll get to that yeah. here in a little bit. I do want to, I want to hear you share because we talked about your entrepreneurial journey starting in yeah. seventh grade yeah. and now you're a business owner and we'll get there. Yeah. But I, I would love for you to touch on the story because I think the story about the suit mm. is really interesting right. because as I've had that conversation with you, I think that was a setup mm-hmm. to, that actually led to you starting the business. Yeah. Because there's a couple of stories. There's like a sequence of stories yeah. that lead. So maybe start with that. Maybe well, start. backing up the bus to that marketing company that I was working for, uh, it was a little bit of a dead end situation. And I had Michelle, my wife, uh, is now working at First Data Resources. And she said, there's a great position opened up there. Uh, I can, you know, probably get you in for an interview. And I said, great. So... Uh, I can remember prior to that interview, I took a uh, class. Uh, well, a, it was a seminar down at the Civic Center at the time. That's how long ago this was. And uh, it was called Success, like 1990, you know, whatever year it was. And it was with Zig Ziglar, Tom Osborne, uh, Lou Holtz, uh, Bob Dole, and uh, all these guys. Wow, these guys were amazing and such a, a motivation for me but they had this one phrase you're you're the president of your own company it's how you represent yourself and who you are uh that'll that'll lead you further you know and they went through very specifics in that 
Um, and then what was really cool afterwards is they did say, hey, anyone that's interested, stay for kind of extra credit on us. And, and they talked about the Lord for 20 minutes and every one of them did. So there were, it was a Christian seminar, but, you know, the first part Powerful. of it was more, you know, business. Business related. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I can remember going back to when Michelle said, or going forward when Michelle said, uh, this, this, this is, I got this great job opportunity for you, you know, take this interview. I was underqualified. Um, and the only shot I had was me, the president. So I said, okay, I went to a store here in Omaha. I don't know if it's still open or not, but it was, it, it, it's in Regency. It's called Parsos. Now I can't afford to be shopping at this place. <laughs> A suit back then is like $1,500. Um, you got to get floor shine shoes, a shirt, the power red tie, the whole nine yards. I think I was $2,000 into this, this process. <laughs> I bring home this suit, lay it out with the tie and the shoes and the whole nine yards. My wife came in and said, where did you get all that? I said, good question. Uh, I went to Parso's and she goes, next question, how much did you spend? And I said, well, remember... I'm the president of my company and I'm representing myself. She said, how much you spend? I said, $2,000. She goes, well, go return it all. <laughs> I didn't return it. I said, I promise it'll pay for itself. That's wow. all, that's, that, I, I promise it will. So I went to the interview, fast forward, got the job. And I can remember them calling me and say, hey, Dave, we love to have you here. We like your ideas. We think you can make a major difference in our company. Uh, and, and here's what we're going to offer you. And I kind of put, the, put my hand over the speaker and I said, watch this. And then I put, you know, <laughs> phone back up to my ear and the, the corded phones. And I said, I would love to take your offer, but I would have to make this to make this transfer. And my wife literally punches me in the arm at the time. <laughs> well, are you crazy? Like, oh, you're throwing away the job. <laughs> right. And I said, they'll call back. So they said, hey, we're going to have to check on this before we can make this decision. They call back two days later. I get the extra raise and it covered the suit. I <laughs> covered the suit. Covered the, the suit. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if this this could be a true statement, right. but that hustle goes all the way back to selling now now later's for twenty five cents in seventh grade. Yeah. But it is interesting because there are just these clues in your life. Yeah. And then, so fast forward, you get this job. You're working for this company. You're now leading lots of people. Yeah. And there's a there's another interesting story that right. actually leads to, to, to you starting your business. Can you share, share that piece? With yeah. Me? And that's, you know, I'm, I'm leaning hard into the Lord at this time. I'm really trying to make those changes, yep. uh, not only in, 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 in going to church and, and saying my prayers and, 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 and reading the Bible, but really manifesting it in my lifestyle. You know what I mean? So, I can remember my boss uh, in my tenure at the very end of it said, hey, we're doing cutbacks. We're not going to pay severance. You need to get rid of 10% of your staff. And I said, well, I have one of the better teams. Um, I, you know, I can't get rid of, you know, really good people. You know, how do I pick and choose? She says, we'll figure it out. We got to get rid of 10%. It's coming from the top. So I went home, prayed about it came back with the ideas. I said, hey, if you take my salary, and they were paying me really good money, uh, split it with these, it would have been three people, and uh, give it to them, I'm gone. And uh, she was perplexed. She goes, what are you doing? I said, I said, I can't do that to these people. Because at the time, you know, I wasn't overly strong in my faith, but I understood more right than, than, than wrong. Wow. And I knew God was saying, don't do this. Wow. And yeah. so like that, that's like even just a, you know, we talk about bearing fruit. Yes. Right. And that's like fruit of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit yeah. speaking to you and challenging you. And so you mm -hmm. take this step of faith and then and to, uh, tell the listeners like how, what, what you told your wife mm -hmm. when you shared this news. I think it's hilarious. Well, I, I thank God that she stayed with me <laughs> through all this because it had to have been harder. And we have uh, a, a daughter that's not even one. Mm. I came home and I told her, I said, hey, I got great news. We're going to start a gym and we're going to call it Total Fitness and we're just going to rock this thing. And she's, oh, sweetheart, that's a great idea. Uh, and I said, great news is I can start on it right now. I quit my job. <laughs> she, she calls my mother <laughs> and she goes, I don't know what you need to tell your boy, but tell him to call Rose back and get his job back. He has lost his mind. 
It's so crazy, man. And yeah. so it's so cool because you take that step mm -hmm. and we, and then tell the listeners how many years you've been in business. 22 years. 22 years. Yeah. And, and, and you survived a really difficult year in 2020. I think it was really cool yeah. to hear about God's faithfulness in, in, yeah. in the midst of that difficult time that we all walked through. Uh, I was just talking to my friend Bill the other uh, other day about it, and um, you know when 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 everything was closing down, uh, and it was a great pivotal time for us too. Because even if you go through that 22 years, I I, I can't just sit here and tell you that whole 22 years was was God led. That business entrepreneur in me pushing, trying to uh, make more money each year, and 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 you know, uh, and God was God was with me you know, and, and God was in control, but not in full control. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. There were still pieces that you were trying to drive. Yeah, totally. And I remember that, that whole situation. And I just, at that point in time in 2020, uh, I literally just said, you know what, this is yours, God. And it's wow. always been his. It was just me releasing my stronghold on, on the whole thing. And we survived not only through that time, we never closed our doors once. Uh, I don't, I can't remember if we, we even lost a client. Now it caused a ripple effect of like harder work and different For things, sure. yeah, he, you know what I mean? And some yeah. changes, but he showed up and I literally was told by a buddy of mine, uh, Bill, and going back to that conversation is that he said, right at the beginning of this, he said, he saw four angels, one in each corner of my building that I, everything would be fine. And that's exactly what God told me during that time. You just stay faithful. This is, you do it exactly how I, I have it planned. And that was the first pivotal point of really going, God, this is 100% yours. Wow. I think there's, there's something that I just want to point out for our listeners that you said mm -hmm. that is incredibly powerful, mm -hmm. incredibly liberating. Mm -hmm. And it could be the thing that unlocks something for somebody on the other side uh, okay. of the camera right now. You said it was in 2020 mm -hmm. that you recognized yes. that the business was God. Yes. You said this, it was his all along, Yeah. but you came to that recognition in 2020. Yes. Here's the reality. We're sitting here today, you and I having this conversation with breath in our lungs yeah. because of God's grace. 100%. We have food on the table today yeah. because of God's grace. Yeah. We are driving vehicles and have homes and beautiful families because of God's grace. Everything yeah. that we have is from him. I know. And that recognition is powerful though, because I bet through that difficult time, there was greater peace and freedom that came as a result. Oh. So I just want, I wanted to point that out because I think there's somebody probably listening today that you're going to come to that recognition right now. Right. Like you're going to recognize that that business, that family, that thing that you have is from him and it's going to change the way that you steward it. Mm -hmm. So now I want to kind of shift the conversation. You're married to Michelle. You've got Haley, your daughter. I want to jump to just the season where, so you're, you're growing in Christ, you're leading this business, mm -hmm. you're leading your family, like God's leading you and challenging you in different ways. Now, talk to us about how you, you ended up here at Love Church. Well, we had visited um, at Miller North is Calvary. Calvary, Calvary okay. Omaha, yeah. So we visited there um, two or three times and had an opportunity to hear, it was Todd every time we were there. Yeah. Uh, it might've just been by luck, but... Uh, Liked, you know, uh, the church uh, just at that point and that season uh, wasn't for us because it was that was probably 2018, maybe, okay, maybe yeah. 2017. Okay, yeah. Um, and then to be honest with you, um, you know, during the, the the once 2000 hit and whatnot, our daughter was at an age where she was going through some changes. Yeah. You know, and life got difficult for us in the house. And uh, I mean, we're so blessed to have her, but it, it we did go through a season. And uh, we just basically said, hey, we've got to get into a church that that can help our daughter. You know, let's talk to Haley, you know, and, and, and find out, you know, a direction we can go. She said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll go to church every Sunday if we go to Love Church. Wow. And, wh and what year is this? That would have been 2000. Well, right at the, because I think we're, we're going on two years. So right at the end of 2020. Wow. 
Yeah, I think when you guys first yeah, opened. So 2020, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, right, we opened up at the end of 2020. Yeah. So it might have been late 2020 or early 2021. Yeah, it was right then. Because I, I, you guys were saying we're brand new, you know, here. And so right as you guys. But she had been going to Calvary on and off. My daughter had. So that really, she loved hearing Todd. And she loved uh, the a lot of the younger people here and stuff. Yeah. And she loved the vibe. So That's so cool, man, that your daughter gets you in the doors here. Mm -hmm. And I just look at, like, your life over the last couple of years and... Mm -hmm. Certainly, if we're honest and vulnerable, um, I mean, all of us, we all yeah. face challenges. Life isn't perfect. It's mm -hmm. not peaches and cream. But I think about even, um, you know, at, like, I'd love to just even share, like, you know, love for you to share just how God has been growing you the past two years mm -hmm. and then how that culminated in you choosing to obey him and get baptized. Yeah, I think, you know, every time I... Uh, because I, I have that tendency and personality to stronghold things a little bit again. Mm -hmm. And I think, like if going back to my daughter or whatever situation we've been walking through, is I, I really feel like each and every time God is trying to clean something up in my life. And, and, and it's a relationship that, that I think, you know, maybe not my fault or, or whatever situation or with my wife. And, and, and I see that, you know, uh, going back to when we first came to love church, if I'm to be completely honest with you, um, we were kind of church floaters, hmm. you know, um, really, uh, I can remember a pastor specifically calling me out at one of the churches because I'd, I'd actually skip worship. Wow. And I came in and he goes, um, I mean, this is a congregation, you know, of a thousand people. And he said, and remember, we need to be here for worship too. And I looked around, and I go, oh my gosh, he's talking about me. But it was a time, remember, when, you know, I, I'm not a slow learner and, and I'm going slow and I'm going, you know, I'm not 100% all in on, on church. And that was really, you know, hard for us to go, okay, you know, do we find a church? Do we land it? Do we show up for everything and now start participating? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being here, you know, greeting and, and you know, and, and to be honest with you, financially, you know, in, in giving was not our thing. Wow. We didn't do it. Wow. And that's just being completely honest. We just, love it. we just felt like, you know, we weren't called to do that. And that's just not true. But you know what I mean? We're slow learners and we're, we're, we're taking this thing, you know, very, very slow and then coming to love and you just feel the Holy Spirit going, no, 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 you need to stay in line here with, with what I'm asking you to do. Wow. Tithing, you name it. Yeah, and it's it's cool because I've seen at, at different points in your journey, you've been in a group, mm -hmm. you've served on a team. Mm -hmm. Sounds like God has challenged you in the area of generosity. Yeah, and like this is a power though of what we talk about, um, this idea of self feeding. Mm -hmm. Just n not only reading the word, but when we read the word, the word reads us. Yeah, and then now we're challenged by the Holy Spirit to get our lives in alignment. Yeah. And that's what's happened. And so then that leads to this baptism moment. Yeah. Like walk us through like your, mm. the, how God challenged you to step into that. Well, again, just reiterating the fact I'm stubborn and I, and I, I got this thing down and God says, you don't, <laughs> let me work on this area. And I could remember, um, uh, just the moment where God was weighing on my heart saying, Hey, you need to get baptized. And I said, God, I'm nailing this right now. You know, I'm going to church, we're tithing, my kids getting lined up. I go, I don't want to be up front uh, mm. looking like uh, an immature Christian. Wow. I mean, it, wow. just giving my heart here, yeah, you know? This, I love the vulnerability. Yeah. And um, it was like Jesus just said, you know what? I got baptized. He's talking wow. about in John, you know, where he just, and I said, point taken. <laughs> yeah, that is the ultimate mic drop. Yeah, Whoa. point taken, point taken. So, um, mm. quick story through the baptism and what a what yeah, an experience. Yeah, that's powerful. Holy moly! Share that for somebody. Somebody needs to be baptized, right? And God's stirring them up and share your right. experience. Of well, you, as I fought through it and I was going to do it, then I thought in my head, "We'll just go through the process." You know what I mean? I'll, I'll go in and sell this thing. I'll just, you know, we'll go up through it and, and I'll say, you know, what, what needs to be said and whatnot. And I, I think they give you like a, uh, two minutes to speak. So they said, you know, try to write down your story in two minutes. So I wrote it down 
and I was going to go up and just do Dave Breyer. And, and, and then I can remember I hit the four stair coming up to the, the, the top deck, uh, it, where, you know, the pastor stands and everything else. And I, and they were waiting to call so where Pastor Jim was. And I almost dropped to my knees and I just said, Lord, I said, I don't want to date Briar this. Hmm. I want you to show up through me today just to influence one person and just, just clean this up for me. Hmm. Uh, and it changed everything because when I got up there, I could hardly get through it. Wow. Uh, Pastor Jim said, hey, you know, uh, tell us your story, Dave bawling the entire time and then just trying to get through it because the Holy Spirit's just weighing Yeah, the me. presence of the Holy Spirit, powerful. And then when I actually went to uh, get baptized, um, you were there, Todd was there, um, uh, Pastor Jim was praying over me, and I cannot explain it to you. I could not see. Like my eyes were closed and I was trying to open them and the Holy Spirit was so powerful and, and how it just resonated through me was like, I just, I mean, I'm crying. I'm, I, I, I just, I, and the, the thought of it prior to that, just going on, you know, why do I need to do this is, is incredible to feel what I went through at that time to say there, there is a reason why he has us walking these steps. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I would not have known that unless I, he spoke to me and said, it's time. Come on, man. I think when I think about your story, there's a phrase that comes to mind. And um, it's from a pastor that we so dearly looked up to who's graduated to heaven, Pastor mm. Steve. Pastor Steve would always, you know, whenever you were meeting with Pastor Steve, he would say this line. He would say, there's always more with the Lord. Mm. And I just think about your life, your journey. Um, you know, I think of like just such a uh, crazy moment where you have this revelation and this kind of moment of surrender when life really could have gone a completely different route. And yeah. then God's grace covers you in that. And just how you've been growing in the Lord for 20 plus years now to the point where you're in your 50s and you're you're yeah. saying, yes, Lord, I will, I will choose to get baptized. Even though I've been walking with you for th this amount of time, yeah. it'd be easy to just say, I'm not going to do that. But I just really believe that your life is being marked by this phrase, there's more with the Lord. And so how I want to kind of just conclude our time together is I kind of want to just give you the floor, man. Like what, what is something that, you, you know, I, I think of like your life, good looking guy, entrepreneur, you know, we live in this area. Um, just even where we're located in Elkhorn, there's a lot of people walking around where it looks like they got it going on. Yeah. But much like you, they're feeling alone on the inside. Yeah. They're feeling like something's missing. And, you know, just what, what would you share? Like, is there any, is there any hope or anything that you would just want to encourage? Like, pretend I'm that person. I'm that guy right now. Well, I did it physically. Uh, I, I've done it financially. Um, I consider my wife to be one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. I've got a beautiful child, uh, a nice home, cars, um, hmm. and none of them gave me joy. Wow. And, and, I, and I love my wife. I love my child uh, with all my heart. But the joy came from the Lord. And that way I can love them, you know? Um, and uh, if if I went back to that time when I was lifting all those weights, you could see this guy being this strong, ready to implode. You know, a guy like me, we go all at it and we're gonna crash. And then the same thing with the gym financially. Man, you're making money, you're making money, and every year you're profiting more and profiting more. But there's no profit in it, you know, and, and I'm gonna crash again. I, I wouldn't be married. Um, and because of God's grace and because Christ came down and just forgave me for all that and still does for the, the idiotic things I might do. For sure. Um, wow. With, without him and, and him taking over my life, a guy like me would just crash and burn. Wow. It makes me think of the verse of scripture, what good is it to gain the whole world yet lose your soul? Yeah. And um, I think there's, there's, 
there's nothing more cool for me as as somebody that's a part of this community and gets to lead in this community than to see you, Michelle, and Haley worshiping together in church, continuing to grow. And I just want to encourage you, man. Um, I know that as as you create space for God to love you and you love him back, he's empowering you to love Michelle and Haley well yeah. and the people that you get to serve. Yeah. And I just believe, I believe this, that the best is yet to come in your life. Well, and I, I, I just have to thank this church and pastor and, and all the other pastors and, and members and stuff. That's yeah. such a loving feeling here that, you know, I don't even think I would have recognized uh, if, if I didn't have the Lord because you guys are, are always supporting. I mean, today even, um, mm. long story short, I had to call a pastor and to say, hey, pray for me today. You know, I, 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 you guys are always there. Yeah, man. Well, that's the heart and it's, you know, we're just, we're just thankful that people like you are a part of the community. You know, we're better together and we need each other. And Thank you I know that us. somebody, somebody's going to listen to this and be encouraged. And so I just, I kind of want to even just, we started with prayer. I'd love to just conclude. As a matter of fact, do you feel comfortable just, just kind of sealing this conversation in prayer and maybe praying for somebody on the other side? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Dear Lord, we come to you in your holy name, Jesus Christ. And I just, I can't thank you enough for, for being there for me mm. and my family. But mm. man, Lord, you, you always show up. And, mm. and, and if anyone's listening to this story right now, let them just hear that each pivotal point of their life and every moment of every day you're there. Um, there was many a times I did not listen. There was many situations why I walked away from you. But Lord, you're always there and you're always providing um, you've not only provided for us uh, uh, physically and financially, but you have literally shown up at every pivotal point, every problem that we, we've ever had. And I just pray for someone out there in this church, mm. for people to understand that no matter what they're going through, no matter what's happening in their life, you are right next to them. And, and just, to, uh, it, and I pray for this church. Uh, this church is a Oh, my gosh, I can't even say enough, Lord, how much they played a role in, in my growth as, as a Christian and my daughters and my wife. So uh, the pastors uh, and the word that they bring, um, our worship, uh, it, I, every time I hear uh, uh, this church worshiping, uh, I'm just in tears. So I thank you for, for everything you provided, Jesus, and, and, and just... If there's, again, if there's someone out there that, that can hear this podcast and, and understand that, you know, you are there 100% and there's people here at this church that are there for them as well. I love you, Jesus, in your holy name that we ask this. Amen. Amen. Loved our conversation, man. Thank you, sir. Good stuff. <laughs>